Hallo, herzlich willkommen bei Shilok und zurück zur Demo von The Letter. Entschuldige, dass ich das cutten musste, aber das ist wirklich eine Demo, die wesentlich länger ist als erwartet. Ähm, ja, wir machen einfach an der gleichen Stelle weiter. It's impossible to overlook her with the way she towers over us. And here I thought Rose was already tall. Who is she anyway? One of the remaining cleaning crews? Dafür wäre sie ähm, schlecht gekleidet. But with how primly dressed she is, I don't think anyone would want to clean in a suit. An expensive suit at that. The gloves alone must have already cost a fortune. Her eyes slowly shift between me and Rose, considering us with an almost unreadable expression before finally fixing a sharp gaze on me. I can't help but fold my arms protectively over myself as she does so. She may be far from a cleaning crew, but she certainly looks like a supervisor, supervisor during evaluation. Just do Camp it, Valley. please. I eye them both warily, but recite everything as she has asked. Rose releases a breath of relief once I'm done. Breath of relief. <sighs> you scared me for a moment there. I was about to call for an ambulance. Das sollte man tatsächlich tun, wenn man jemanden bewusstlos äh, am Fuß einer Treppe findet. Are you all right? Exasperation soon replaces the dull ache. The memory is a little fuzzy, but the attic and... There... there was someone, Rose. In the attic. Someone? You mean a client? Oh, that's unlikely. It, it's probably just one of the cleaning crews. The boss sent a few of them back this morning for some last minute. Cleaning crew? Klar. Es war eine von den Putzfrauen. No, not any of those. They're... Ugh, I'm not actually sure. Wait, didn't I call you? You said you were in the attic when you answered. That's why I went there in the first place. Genau. <laughs> Both Rose and the lady look at me like I've just grown another head. Did I say something weird? Rose quickly casts an apologetic smile at the woman before the awkward silence stretches on further. It's her saleswoman's smile, the same one she taught me back when I was still her trainee. I should show this to troublesome clients or just to avoid trouble in general, she advised. It's also the same one she gives me when I've done something particularly absurd that may cause us to lose a potential sale. Her eyes are serious when she turns back to me. She takes both of my shoulders, gently squeezes it, and with as much patience she can muster. As much as I'd love to have gotten at least a heads up of your arrival, I didn't really get a call from you. You know, signal here is absolutely horrendous. I was in the garden earlier and couldn't even make a single call. Isabella, I'm going to ask again. Are you really all right? What happened? I... I don't know. It's all a bit blurry. I remember I was looking for you, but you weren't in the attic. And... and there's... whoever it is. Then I must have tripped on a rug or something on the way down. Oh... oh no. Do you think someone came in while you were out? You left the main door open! We are so going to get into big trouble if something gets stolen, Rose! Perhaps it is a concussion. Are you sure you feel fine? We could still call for an ambulance. I could cover for you. No, I'm fine. I'm okay, Rose. I can work. Wait, wait. Hold your horses, Rose. I can't just miss an important sale because of a minor bump in the head. An extremely minor bump. Der dich immerhin das Bewusstsein gekostet hat, aber was soll's? I've had worse when I was a kid. This is nothing. Besides, if I leave, you'll have to shoulder everything in the open house. Alone. And in a mansion this big? Well, there's also the part where I may lose that bonus BRC promised, but that's completely beside the point. Rose gives me a skeptical look when I turn the cold compress to her, and I return the cold compress to her and push myself off the floor. I have to use the staircase railings to steady myself, but otherwise I feel fine. See? I'm A-OK! -okay. The two of them exchanged a worried glance, and Rose assumes a contemplative Look, I bite my lower lick, uh, lip in anticipation if she says no. Right, you in. A smile threatens to slip out of me, from me. If I see that you aren't feeling well, I'm taking you personally to the nearest clinic to have you checked. Clear? Clear? Clear as day, ma'am. Thanks, Rose. You insisted. But remember what I said. First sign of you looking not okay, and we're off. No questions asked. It's just a small bump. Don't worry. You shouldn't downplay these kinds of things. It could be a serious injury for all we know. <clears throat> Suddenly a small cough sounds against the walls of the foyer, interrupting our banter. 
The woman is looking expectantly at the two of us, her stare making me shrink back a little on myself. She isn't really intimidating. Well, she is. But not in the scary, negative way. Far from it, actually. Her demeanor simply commands an air of sophistication and respect. In a different world, a younger me would have probably wished to be like her. <clears throat> at our lack of response, she coughs again, lifting a well-trimmed eyebrow at me in question. Words get cold in my throat at the sight of it, and Rose, as usual, is swift to catch my blunders. My sincerest apologies, Mrs. Miss. Miss McCulloch. Marianne McCulloch. McCulloch? She hands Rose her business card. Ich hätte das wohl immer McCulloch einfach ausgesprochen, aber okay. Interior designer. Ah, okay. The words interior designer catch my eyes before my partner flips it over. Oh, probably someone interested in the mansion for its 17th century influences then. I won't hold it against her, though. Despite the hearsays and remaining uninhabited for years, uh, for years, the mansion's original fittings and furniture have been kept completely intact and restored to pristine condition. I suppose some people find that trip to the past feeling appealing. After all, with what it offers, this place could be a haven for people looking to live somewhere with a classic historical charm. Miss McCullough, I'm Rose Cooper and this is my partner, Isabella Santos. Hi! We're just ironing out a few things, but we'll be starting the tour soon enough. In the meantime, we've prepared some refreshments for you in the parlor while you're waiting. If you could please... Thanks. There's no need for it, though. I just dropped by for a quick survey of the place. Eh, uh, what? I thought I should check the estate before I meet with the homeowners. That? Okay, okay, Rose is auch confused, this, this is good. Rose's confusion is impossible to miss when she glances at me and I return it with an equally perplexed look. And against my better judgment, I blurt out the first question has come to, that comes to my I'm mind. I'm sorry, homeowners? I should have kept my mouth shut. A flash of irritation crosses her face but it instantly disappears under a mask of prof professional detachment. Yes. Hannah Wright? I was hired by her to handle the interior design for their newly bought home. Yeah. Kenny. This is the Ermengard Mansion, right? It is, but... She pauses, possibly trying to find the right words to fix the, awkward si fix the awkward situation without offending someone. Uh, wir, wir kennen doch diese Hannah, oder? Ich meine, müsste Isabella sie nicht kennen? Sie steht hier. Das ist eine andere Hannah. Suddenly Rose nudges me with her elbow. Okay, I don't know, ist jetzt nicht so professionell. Genau, das ist eigentlich das Beste. Melden macht frei. Wir sprechen mit unserem Chef. Those few moments have given me enough time to clear my head of any nervousness or confusion clouding it. Oh. Ah, die ist hier. Marianne. Die haben wir doch gerade erst kennengelernt. Ach, sind das Leute teilweise, die wir noch nicht kennen? Okay, sie mag uns jetzt auf jeden Fall schon lieber. Genauso gerne wie Zack, den wir offenbar schon kennen. What? Egal. Äh, ja. Genau. It is, ma'am. But we weren't aware the mansion has already been sold. What do you mean? I almost flinch when she turns her gaze on me, but I stand my ground. Besides, it isn't like I haven't dealt with awkward situations like this before. I may screw up at times, but that doesn't mean I haven't learned a thing or two in the five years I've worked in the business. The mansion is indeed for sale, ma'am. Today is the open house, in fact. However, we haven't heard anything from the higher-ups that a deal has already been closed for this particular property. If you'd like, my co-agent and me can check with them right now. She nods, seemingly in deep thought after I've finished. She appears to be a reasonable person anyway. Given the proper explanation, she'd surely understand. I thought something looked odd when I arrived here. <sighs> Excuse me, I think I need to make a call to my secretary. Thank you for your assistance, Miss Santos. No problem. With a slight wave of her hand, she leaves us. That seems to be the end of it. Both Rose and I breathe a sigh of relief. Disaster averted. Gut, welches Desaster, wenn es hier ein Missverständnis gibt. I also don't miss the thumbs up she gives me for doing a good job and I can't help but swell with pride. Wo sind die thumbs up? Jede Geste und Mimik machen sie, aber das nicht. Still, I've already prepared myself to dial the number to our Luxburn office and check, even if she didn't ask for it. I will be very frustrated if for some reason something has already been decided without my or Rose's knowledge. That's a whole, level of unf a whole new level of unfair. We've been working hard on this. Moments later, Miss McCulloch 
returns, looking a little frustrated, but with an apology clear in her face. I feel a little sorry for her having to go all this trouble. There seems to have been a little misunderstanding with my client. If you'll allow it, I'd like to stay and wait for them here. I was informed they'll be dropping by for the open house today. I figured it'd be a waste to just leave after that long drive. I might as well meet him here. Hmm. Also, also, sie dachte, diese Leute hätten das schon gekauft, aber die wollen sie nur dabei haben, wenn sie das Haus besichtigen. Wahrscheinlich, um zu gucken, ob sie was draus machen können. Okay, das macht vielleicht noch. Certainly. You can stay at the parlor in the meantime, ma'am. I'm sure it won't be long before our guests arrive. Na, wie gut. And Isabella? I left a few documents in my car. You know where I keep those. Can you please get it for me? Sure. Ross takes a glance at her wristwatch before tossing me a set of keys. And hurry! We've still got a few minutes to double check those papers. Yes, ma'am. Okay, got it. The two of them disappear behind the parlor's door. Das sind jetzt aber... Äh, next. Hm. Okay, das ist wirklich nur noch mal nacherzählt. The departure brings with it a stillness to keep me company, neither welcoming nor comforting. Alone like this, it's impossible not to think of what really happened. I wish the memory isn't as elusive as it normally is. Then again, Rose already said she didn't receive any call from me. Was it just paranoia? A temporary lapse after having heard all those tales about the place? Probably. I want to think of it as such. Better to think of it as such, so I can work in peace. Except a small part of my mind begs to differ, and if I'm going to be completely honest with myself, I want nothing more than to leave this place as soon as possible. I don't know what's in this house, and I don't want to know. The keys Rose have just handed me... The keys Rose has just handed me dig into my palm. It's jagged edges creating shallow ridges on my skin from how hard I'm clutching it. And so du damit aufhören. It's a reminder of what I still need to do and why I've taken this job in the first place. Hugging my blazer closer to my body, I exit the house to get what Rose has asked of me. Just a few more hours, Isabella. Sell the house, get the money. So sollte man das den Leuten nicht zeigen. A flock of people have already gathered in the mansion's front yard by the time we officially open the doors. I'm not sure whether I should feel baffled or underdressed standing in their presence. Men and women in, of wealth and, wealth and status already dressed to the nine in fancy suits and love lovely dresses of varying colors compose the medium-sized crowd. Their necks, arms and fingers are adorned with silver and gold glinting in the afternoon sun. Some even have ridiculously fancy feathered hats on their head. I really hope there aren't any magpies living nearby in the stories. Those birds will have a field day in this. Na, das wäre schon peinlich, wenn die Gäste von Vögeln attackiert werden. They are murmuring amongst themselves, looking at the estate's facade appraisingly, facade appraisingly, with some arguing about whose mansion has the superior architecture. But most of it stops as Rose calls for their attention. They don't look too pleased at being ordered around, but what can they do about it? <laughs> yeah, that's one of Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Rose Cooper and this is my partner, Isabella Santos. Hi! We'll be taking a tour of the mansion in two groups. Please make sure you filled up our sign-in forms before joining a specific group. Those who want to look around the first floor, please follow my partner. I'll be guiding the ones who wish to see the ground floor. Hearing this, a few wonder to me. They are mostly old ladies who seem daunted at the idea of climbing all those stairs. Miss McCulloch also joins our group. Das sind Hannah und Luke, das weiß ich. Ähm, hier bin ich falsch. Da. Hannah und Luke, definitiv. Und Luke sieht aus wie der Typ auf dem Bild. Miss McCullough also joins our group, but what really catches my eye is the elegantly dressed pair she approaches. It's so nice to finally meet you! When Chief Inspector Lee mentioned that a famous interior designer is in town, I knew I had to get you! Your confidence in my skills is very flattering, ma'am. I'm sure you won't disappoint, Marianne. I'm sure about this. Oh, you know each other? Not at all, ma'am. Das hat sie jetzt etwas zu schnell gesagt, oder irre ich mich? You mentioned something about a Marianne on our way here, darling? Oh, yes, I think I did. <laughs> ah, they must be the clients she was talking about. I might have seen their faces somewhere before. Some magazine? Television? 
I can't quite remember, but then again, most of our guests have likely ended up on the news one way or the other. I won't be surprised if these two already have. For, pe for people who are popular, though, they aren't dressed as loudly as the others, and in their simplicity, the couple stands out. Also etwas geschmackvoller gekleidet als der Rest. The woman in particular is stunning enough to turn the heads of most people in my group, especially the man with wandering eyes. The guy standing beside her doesn't seem to mind, though. And if I'm going to be a bit bolder with my assumptions, I'd say he's basking in the attention. Both of them, in fact. I think they are brother and si I'd think they are brother and sister if it wasn't for their public display of affection. Now, wollen wir mal hoffen, dass sie nicht Bruder und Schwester sind, ja. The matching rings on their fingers just cement the fact that they are indeed a couple. Whatever. Couple or not, what's important is we get this deal closed before the current owners can even think of cancelling the listing. I just hope one of the people in my or Rose's group is brave and generous enough to buy this mansion. And so, with papers in my hand, I lead the way. Da. Und wenn wir ganz ehrlich sind, könnte die Lady auch die Hannah sein. Wobei ich das beim Luke... Beim Look finde ich es doch vielleicht auch wegen der Art der Kleidung. Egal. When they aren't whispering among themselves or going ooh and ah over one thing or another, they ask questions. From how the restoration process went to the history of the place, I answer them all. More than happy to talk about the art pieces and architecture mostly. However, I'm careful not to mention anything about the urban legend. Ich glaube, reiche Exzentriker würden das Haus dann umso toller finden. Not a good material for sales talk, even if the entire population of Luxburg knows about it. Some of the furnishings here are actually the 17th century originals, all of which have undergone a painstaking restoration process just to return its original beauty. Even the glass thing, colorful ones. Oh, I don't know, but you get the idea, I hope. The glass thing, colorful ones, meinst du das hier? Especially that one, ma'am. It is said to be a gift commissioned by the fiancé of Lady Charlotte Ermengarde. Die, die sich umgebracht hat. The mansion's current owners have specifically requested that the restoration crew take great care in handling it. It's a priceless work of art and the most distinctive feature of the mansion. Yeah, it's a wonderful thingy. By the time I've stopped talking, her attention is already elsewhere. Super. Isn't this place wonderful, darling? I told you it's not a total waste of your time. Ja, vielleicht einfach, weil der Typ auf dem Bild eine ähnliche Farbe trägt wie er. Was sie mit ihren Haaren macht, wie süß. Wonderful. I don't know. Isn't it a bit too small? Wait. We might have to break a wall down to have more room. Nein, dann hast du eigentlich sogar einen Raum weniger. Dann machst du aus zwei Räumen einen größeren, aber du hast nicht mehr Platz. Well, I think it is just right. Don't you think so, Marianne? Marianne? Ich dachte erst Marianne, obwohl im Englischen ausgesprochen ist es wahrscheinlich das gleiche. It is splendid, ma'am. But isn't it a little too early to make plans when no deal has been signed yet? Never mind that. It isn't going to be a problem. We've got a wonderful legal team to handle everything. Also sie steht hier im Foyer und hat das Haus schon innerlich gekauft. Start taking notes though. I think I've got a few things I want changed before we move in. Ein bisschen schnell die lovely lady, aber okay. The rest of the conversation gets lost in the chatter of our companions. I don't want to make any assumptions yet, but their sheer interest is enough to give me some semblance of hope. Interesse ist gut, die plant schon, ob sie hier Wände rausreißen oder nicht. Oh, please, 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 let these guys be the one. Eventually, our group reaches the kitchen. Much like the rest of the house, a great deal of effort has been put in retaining the room's classical appeal. The open hearth at the end of the room, in particular, looks amazing, like the ones I've only seen in fairy tale books. Ja, da wo dann die Kinder reingeschubst werden sollen. And mad props to the cleaning crew. Seriously, after overhearing hundreds of their complaints about the suit and tar staining the bricks and how much of a pain in the arse cleaning this be, this'll be, they still managed to pull this off. Or make it look presentable at least. Was sieht doch hübsch aus. The highlight of the room, however, is what's underneath this hatch here. Oh, don't say anything yet. An underground wine cellar. <laughs> Mr. in Grey. This is the first time the guy in Grey speaks up. Mr. Luke Wright, my memory supplies from the forms they signed earlier. His sudden attentiveness catches me off guard. Since the start of the tour, only his wife has shown any form of genuine interest in the place. 
but this time something lights up in his eyes at the mention of the Undercroft. What's so interesting about a basement? I really don't understand rich people sometimes. Right now he just gives me the impression of a child who has seen what he absolutely wants for Christmas. I've always found it cute whenever I see children act that way, my younger siblings especially. On a grown man? It's almost funny. Yes, sir. It could house around 7,000 to 11,000 bottles of wine. Okay. Truly. And the room? How was it built? The bricks that were used to build the cellar have been carefully picked for the purpose of maintaining and preserving a constant temperature and humidity in the room. It's a good place to keep your private collection in if you have one, sir. It keeps the corks in good condition. Oh, love. Didn't you say before that you wanted to make your own personal vineyard? Perhaps you could start one here. You know we're going to need space for that, darling. And this isn't big enough? If it's space you're worried about, sir, the Ermengarde Mansion sits on a 46-acre lot. There's plenty of room for it. We were told that the original owners had a horse stable built here before, too. There's a contemplative... Ich weiß immer noch nicht, wie man contemplativ im Englischen genau betont. Contemplative expression on Mr. Wright's face. Ah, Mr. Wright, ich verstehe. But he doesn't say anything further. His wife, however, seems really pleased that he has started to show interest, if only a little. I smile to myself. I may not completely understand how these people's mind work, but I sure as hell know how to spot a buyer with sincere interest. Score! <laughs> I can't wait to tell Rose. The rest of the tour goes by without a hitch. After more than half an hour, we're able to cover almost every room in the ground floor and are heading to the parlor. Funny, the first time BRC has had us survey the property, I kept complaining to Rose how big it is. Now, I can't even bring myself to care, no matter how much my feet hurt. Maybe this is just my excitement over a possible sale? Ich höre flüstern. When we reach the parlor, however, an odd feeling washes over me. It starts off as a small, as small goosebumps on my skin, a feeling of being watched intently. Whispers in my ear and shadows dancing lurking in the corner of my vision. Dark silhouettes that are gone when I turn to look. A chill settles down my spine, making me feel sick, and I start to break out in a cold sweat. I can't do this. I need to sit down for a moment. The old ladies in the group have been requesting for a break anyway. If I can just... Excuse me? Everyone? We... We will be taking a 15-minute rest here before we visit the first floor. In the meantime, please help yourselves to the refreshments and snacks we've prepared. If anyone has any questions, feel free to approach me. I'd be happy... Oh, Entschuldigung. She'd be happy to help them. I let them sit while I retreat into a quiet corner to recover. It's not what you think. Don't think about it. It's not what you think. I've probably just called Becca's cold. I don't think about it. I'm left alone for a good while, the same words spilling out of my lips in a silent prayer. Until a hand taps my shoulder. Hello, you there? You there. Hi, ma'am, right? Y yes, ma'am. Oh, look at you. Having to show a group around a mansion this big must be exhausting. Not a problem, ma'am. I'm just doing my job. What a hard worker. Anyway, Isabel, right? Isabella, actually. But yes, what can I help you with, ma'am, right? Please, just Hana. Call me Hana. I just wanted to ask, how soon are we able to move in? My brain completely stops. The sick feeling plaguing me is suddenly gone, replaced by utter bewilderment. Is this a joke? She looks at me expectantly as I struggle to come up with an answer. Wait, ma'am, I... you see... But we haven't even negotiated a price yet, ma'am. We haven't even finished touring the rest of the mansion. A sale would be great and all, but... She stops me from speaking any further and puts a hand on my shoulder. For a moment, with her tight smile, she looks as if she has tasted a particularly sour lemon. Oh, please, sweetie, don't insult me. Money is not a problem. And, just between you and me... This place is better off with us than with some old lady who will probably just fill it up with cats. You can't never feel a cats in the room. I personally don't think there's anything wrong with having cats here, ma'am, Hana. I'm sure there's more than enough space here if you want pets. Perhaps I'm still not feeling well, but really, what's wrong with cats? Aber du machst das doch auch Hunde, oder? Oh, das heißt natürlich nicht, dass sie keine Katzen mag, aber da steht sie mag Hunde und nichts von Katzen. 
More importantly, why is she talking about moving in already? Well, I'm more of a dog person. But du auch. But you see, this is going to be a gift to my darling. It's going to be our anniversary soon. Hmm. Moment. Bist du die tote Frau hier? Wollt ihr hier zu eurem Jubiläum wieder einziehen? Vielleicht ist das das Rätsels Lösung. Sie sieht wirklich ein bisschen... Ich weiß es nicht. And it would be so wonderful if you can secure its purchase for us. Why, I can even offer something extra if you help us out with the paperwork. I... we actually have a process for this, ma'am. I don't really think that would be necessary or appropriate. <laughs> oder angemessen, genau. And just what are you two lovely ladies talking about here? Leaving me and our lovely interior designer to talk here by ourselves. <laughs> what would the people think, darling? Oh, it's just small talk, love. I was asking if she could help me with the paperwork. I try not to wince when her nails dig into my shoulder. I can't help but send an imploring look at Miss McCullough, who only gives me an apologetic smile and a shrug. Uh, uh, yeah, I can give you a fact sheet and a form to fill out. She wastes no time in taking the papers from my hand and shuffles through the bunch. Oh man, Rose is going to be so angry at me for letting her do that. Wonderful. And Marianne, I'd really love to talk to you about those changes. You took some notes earlier, yes? I did, ma'am. But I really hope that this time... Excellent. Hopefully you can help us out too, Isabel. Isabella. Right, right. It's a lovely name, Isabel. It's Isabella. Yes, that's great. We'll be more than happy to put in a good word to your superiors, too, and... What's this? This. Achievement unlocked. D-list horror... prop? Keine Ahnung. A look of confusion and disgust appears on her face. Turning to her husband, he merely shrugs in reply. That's... Uh, an interesting work of art. Not to my taste, though. I'm sorry. Darling... Buttercup, art is a complete overstatement for this garbage. <laughs> it looks like a cheap prop from a D-list horror film. Okay, there's stand for prop. Shush, love. Let the girl do what she pleases with... Uh, what do they call this? Oh, forget about it. At the very least, it's not as... dreadful as the one art exhibit I was forced to attend last month. You should have seen it, Marianne. Even you would have been appalled. Even you? But I'm sure you'll know what to do with our walls once we get started. I highly doubt it is as bad as you say, ma'am. Nevertheless, you can be assured that my team will only pick whatever suits your tastes. Nothing of this chain letter sort, of course. It has to always work with a palette. I'm quite sure chain letters these days don't come in this... form. That's wohl. It's my turn to be puzzled. What do they mean? Rose and I double-checked everything. Are the papers I handed not enough? I want to ask what I did wrong. I don't want to mess this up. But with the way Madame Hannah is leading the conversation, conversation, I'm already, I'm afraid that's exactly what will happen if I do interrupt her. That's good to hear. See, darling, isn't she an absolute delight to work with? I can't wait to see how this place will look when she's done with it. Oh, you don't have to tell me that, Buttercup. A smile is back on her face when she turns to me and hands me a strange piece of paper. I would still put it away if I were you, though. Otherwise, people might get the wrong impression. Anyway, as I was saying... I don't hear the rest of what she says after that. I can only stare down at the paper, the letter in my hands. Ach so! Sie hat ihn den Kettenbrief... hat sie wohl aus Versehen dazwischen. The sides crinkle in my grip and my breathing grows labored. Dread quickly fills my mind. Isabella? Isabella, are you all right? You're looking pale. I didn't even notice when Rose groups joined us. Rose's group joined us in the parlor. I want nothing more than to say no. I'm not all right. I want to leave this place because I remember everything as clear as day. This letter, the woman in the attic, it's real. The letter. I, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Careless. I've been so careless. How do I even tell them? Without looking like I've gone mad. Should I even tell them? Besser nicht, glaube ich. 
Ähm, ich glaube besser nicht. I, Rose, I... Relationship Status up there. Aber Rose hat doch gar keine Relation. Ja? Ach, Marianne. Guck mal, die mag uns jetzt lieber als alle anderen, wenn ich das rede. Vielleicht noch mit Rebecca gleich auf. Obwohl zumindest Zack, Marianne und Ashton ja auch unsere Freunde sind. Äh, Zack, Rebecca und Ashton unsere Freunde sind. Komisch. The words are stuck in my throat. I want to tell her, I really do. But is she... Habe ich jetzt doch auf Telling her gedrückt? She already dismissed me earlier. It's a concussion, she said. It's not. There really is something in this house, the attic, in that ladder. It's going after us. Please believe yeah, me. me. Is Isabelle all right? Ma'am Hannah's voice breaks through the haze beginning to cloud my mind. Rose is looking down on me, worry etched in her features. I didn't even notice when she removed the wrinkled paper from my hands and pushed me down to sit on a nearby chair. From the edge of my vision I can also make out Miss McCullough asking a passing food server for a glass of water. Through it all Mr. Wright stands in the sidelines. Although curious, he appears more inclined to watch the scene than help. They are all as likely to believe me as Rose does. To everyone, what's ever in this house is just a hoax, a cautionary tale for children. Isabella, do you need me to call that ambulance? Yeah, vielleicht besser, dann kommen wir hier raus. She offers me a drink, but I push it away. I need to get out of here before I cause an even bigger commotion. Clear my head, take a breath of fresh air, fresh air. Anything to take my mind off things. No one is going to believe me anyway. No, I'm just feeling a bit out of it. Excuse me, I'll be back. I just need to catch my breath. Bowing my head, I mutter a quick apology and gather my stuff to make a quick exit. It doesn't matter if this place is haunted or not. Of course, trouble and Rose can be quite unforgiving of behavior like this. I'm almost at the door when she catches up to me. Isabella, wait! No, I will not. The apprehension must have been quite obvious on my face, because her expression instantly shifts to something gentler, eyes softer, a fond smile spreading on her lips. Hey, I'm not angry. I know. I'm sorry I ruined this for you. Come on, you didn't ruin anything. It's not like we haven't ran into any problems before. If we don't get a deal today, we can always try on a different day. And... Look. She hesitates, completely trailing off before shifting her gaze down to her hands. A small gesture to stall. Her fingers are fiddling with a piece of folded paper. It's that stupid ladder again. My hands stiffen when she gives it back, but I take it nevertheless. More as an automatic response than any desire to have it back. I'll throw it away if I can. But I have this nagging feeling that one way or another it'll find its way back to me regardless of what I do about it. Rose, this is... You have to let them know about... I know you want us to get this sale so badly. And we've made a lot of plans on how to go about this. I mean, who wouldn't? This is the first time I've been assigned to a property like this. I've sold plenty of houses before, but nothing like what we have here. It's a beautiful house. I'd love to get one of my own if I ever win the lottery. But I think... Look, here's the thing, Isabella. If we are going to do this, work on something, I don't know, this big, I need you in top shape. And the way you are now... My mind stops. What? Wait, no, I can still work. I just need to get myself together. That's what you said earlier. I let it go because I thought, hey, it's your own body and you should know more than anyone how you feel. But after this... I really think you should take a break. You're... you're kicking me out? <laughs> no, I'm not. Look, all I'm asking is for you to take a seat somewhere. I can see you and let me handle this for now. You're clearly not yourself and I honestly could use some time not worrying when you'll fall over or not. The day's not even over and I'm already feeling the stress. Please, humor me just this once. She clasps her hand together in front of her, eyes pleading for understanding. And I do understand, to some extent. That doesn't mean I'll feel any less awful. Whether at myself, at the unlucky turn the situation has taken, or for her, I don't really know. I promise I'll give you a full report of what happens <coughs> after. I'll even let you take the lead tomorrow. Yay! Das will ich doch gar nicht in diesem Horrorhaus. Fine. Okay. I'll step aside for now. You're upset. A little, yeah, obviously. 
If it's any consolation, I won't tell the boss about today. You know how he is. Please don't. I don't want a repeat of the lecture I got during my first assignment. War das nicht das, wo sie die Leiche im Sofa gefunden haben? He called me a noob. And I don't even know what that means. Du weißt nicht, was noob bedeutet? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> At the memory, we both burst into helpless giggle, earning us a strange looks from the guests milling about the door. Talking and laughing like this, it's easy to forget any mishaps that happened. Little things you learn to appreciate, I guess. So, are we good? I'm still not okay with it, but Rose has a point. It's better for me to step out of this for, of this one for now. I won't be able to help you anyways if I keep getting distracted like this. Maybe I'll just take a walk outside or something while I wait for you to wrap things up. Please, just stay put. I insist. I'm not an invalid, Rose. You clearly have not seen how you looked earlier. It's not that bad. Color hasn't even returned to your cheeks yet. Just stay here, all right? Don't even think of going anywhere. Let me finish what I'm doing here, and then I'll take you back to Luxembourg myself to have that minor bump checked. At least wait for me to call someone who will fetch you, okay? Okay. She's gone before I can voice one word of complaint. Left with nothing else to do, I find myself drifting back to the foyer. A few visitors linger in the area, some merely enjoying the afternoon sunlight streaming through the stained glass windows. Others can be seen admiring the priceless antiques decorating the room. One group of elderly gathered some ways across from me is occupied in a friendly banter about which one could cost more to buy. A little argument here, an occasional laughter and teasing there. I smile to myself. The conversation reminds me of what I've been missing these past few months. Rose is probably right. I do need a break. Maybe this afternoon's hangout will help. Speaking of, I could call Ash. It's a few hours early from what I've told him, but he did ask for a call once I'm done. Besides, I don't have a ride back. He offered, so I might as well take it. Or bribe him into giving me one. Not that he'll ever accept the letter, personal convictions and all. Honestly, if there's something I find admirable in him, despite his tense and tendency to annoy the hell out of me, it's that. Sie findet bewundernswert, dass sie sie nerven kann? Well, whatever way works, a free ride is still a free ride. There's Rose's offer too, but despite what she says, I know she'll be busy for the rest of the afternoon, especially without me assisting. Bothering her for a small, for a favor as small as this is the last thing I want to do right now. A couple of minutes and a few prayers asking for a decent signal later, the call finally connects and... Shit! Stop, Bob Ash from Deluxe City. Baggers watch out, can't beat me. Looking for trouble? Better not lie. I'm a cool dude. Pretty fly for an Asian guy. Pretty fly for an Asian guy, okay? Ash is offenbar Asiate. Was? Shit, how loud is this thing even? Okay, Ash is offenbar hier. The sharp ringing fills the entire hall, disrupting the pleasant quiet that has settled. Soon enough, Hat begins to turn in search of the source, source mine included. Oh, mach das aus, Ash! My eyes dart around the small crowd before zeroing in on a lone figure crouched behind the same group of old people checking out the decors moments ago. He's facing away from me, fumbling with something in his hands. Yeah, was könnte das wohl sein? But I don't need to see his face to know whose back it is. Oh, I'd recognize that dump parka anywhere. Without bothering to end the call, I march towards him. After what happened today, I'm really not in the mood to deal with this. Of all the times to... Ashton Frey! Ja, da kriegst du den wütenden Gesichtsausdruck, Ash. What happens next is something I shall regret later for having not recorded. He jumps, lets out an undignified yelp, followed by his phone slipping out from his grip. It bounces from one hand to the other in his poor attempt to catch it before ultimately falling flat to the floor with a resounding clack. I kind of feel sorry for the phone. And the floor. But it's not every day that you can catch someone like Ash off guard and get a reaction. Damn his stupid detective senses. I'll take every ounce of victory I can get, no matter how small. Ha! An awkward pause passes between us. A blink. <clears throat> a cough. He makes a face. And then, in a too quick motion, he ducks and retrieves his abused gadget while a grin threatens to break out from my lips. He doesn't meet my eyes when he straightens, but a flush has crept up his neck and cheeks. 
In another universe, where we haven't known each other for five years and suffering through his teasing isn't a day-to-day -day occurrence, chances are I'd find this adorable. Endearing, even. Unfortunately, this isn't that kind of world. The way things are, I'm already content to see him out of his normally collected disposition. Hello to you too, scaredy cat. I can't stand to be greeted like a normal person, you know. Soll das Angst ha? Ich, ich, ich gehe jetzt davon aus, Scaredy Cat heißt Angsthase. What? And miss that look on your face? No way! Oh man, I should have taken a picture. I am so honored you find this funny. Is that how you treat your guests? I think I need to talk to your supervisor. Ah, du willst das Haus auch kaufen? Talk to yourself! You aren't even a guest here. What are you doing here in the first place? For a moment, he looks like a cat that swallowed the canary. Suddenly checking every nook and cranny in his phone for a damage or scratches seems to be more interesting seems to be a more interesting activity than explaining himself. Ash. I could be looking to buy a house. Mm -hmm. A mansion. Yeah, why not? Did you see the view outside? It doesn't look haunted to me at all. Echt nicht? He's messing with me. Ashton, I am not in the mood. What are you doing here? He chances a glimpse at some point behind me. The parlor? Curious, I follow his gaze, but before I can figure out what has caught his attention, he places a hand on my shoulder and turns me back to face him. I just finished working on something, so I drop by. Asshole, yeah. I still don't see how his work has anything to do with why he's here. At my confused look, he drops the hand resting on my arm, like he has touched something particularly hot and casually rubs the back of his neck. Er findet dich also heiß. Ja, also ich glaube, das soll mir das alles sagen, dass er irgendwie in sie verknallt ist und deshalb um sie rum sein will. And I, uh, I said I'll see if I can pick you up. Turns out I can. Uh, free time and all. Das ist nett. So here, here I am. Uh, figured you'd still be busy and so I roamed around for a while. Oh, you should have mentioned that sooner. I was about to throw you out. Throw me? Hey, I was given a pamphlet. I think that makes me a legitimate client. We have mandatory sign-in sheets for clients, Ash. I didn't see your name on it. And you can't just roam around because it says open house. Normal people actually follow an etiquette here. Right, okay. I think I'll just go ahead and... No, wait. I wasn't really going to throw you out. Rose said... <laughs> Never mind. I was just about to leave anyway. Wait, what? Now? Something must have shown in my face because he pauses and gives me a long, hard stare. Sometimes I forget how easy reading people is for Ash, given how he often looks as if everything around him is a chore. I avoid his eyes, hoping he'll drop the subject and won't ask any more questions. The last thing I want is to tell what is to tell him what happened, especially the part about the letter. In fact, he's the last person on earth I'll ever think about telling it to, if I can help it. Sure, he's a dependable guy. God knows how many times he has helped me, even without me asking for it. But stuff like ghosts and the supernatural... He'll never believe those, even if he hears it from a friend. Except maybe it's Becca. On a good day, the most harmless thing he'll do is give us an explanation why those things have no chance of ever being real. At worst, he's insufferable. He'll poke fun at you at every single chance you'll get. Asshole. What did I ever do to him? He never does that to Becca or Zack. Weil er in die nicht verknallt ist. Warum mache ich mir darüber Gedanken? I can already imagine how things will come down the moment I spill a word of what I saw. Nope, over my dead body. Before it catches his attention, I shove the letter deep into my bag. What's wrong? Nothing. Well, let's just go. Doesn't look like a nothing to me. We still have Zack's movie tonight, remember? It's still early. And didn't you say your shift will end around five or six? What about... Hey, Isabella, wait up! A rush of air greets me as soon as the main door opens. Not the usual autumn draft, but it's still a welcome change from the stifling atmosphere inside the mansion. Ash's footsteps are quick behind me, the soles of his shoes thumping hard against the polished concrete in an awkward cadence as he rushes to catch up. He calls out once, twice. The mansion still looms in the background. Whispers calling me back, shadows beckoning. Help me. Help me, help me. I don't look back. We spent the ride back to Luxburn City in a relatively quiet manner, with only the radius disjointed hum in the backgrounds to fill the silence. Occasionally, Ash will reach out to fiddle with it until the signal settles or it's on a respectable volume. 
but otherwise he doesn't say anything. Neither do I. However, if the furtive glances he's been sending my way are signs, I know there are things he's been itching to ask when we left the mansion. I keep my eyes trained on the passing scenery outside in the small hope that my disinterest will dissuade him. Here. All of a sudden he tosses something at me from a small compartment on his side. It hits me cleanly on the chin before I can make a move to catch it. The small package makes a soft landing on my lap instead. <laughs> Sorry. The glare I sent him wipes the smirk about to form cleanly off his face. He clears his throat, focusing his eyes on the road again. I swear he did that on purpose. Ignoring him, ignoring him I flip the half-forgotten package on my lap. I won't say no to free food. But why are you giving away cereal bars? I always have one on my person. And you look like you're about to pass out back there. Have you eaten lunch yet? I don't even get a chance to deny it because right on cue my stomach rumbles loudly and an empty gnawing feeling in my belly becomes noticeable. No surprise there. I did skip breakfast and lunch so I could catch, Be could catch Becca while she was on break. I was hoping to get a small meal after. I guess with everything going on I just forgot until Ash mentioned it. It's not like the hollow feeling's new to me, though. If anything, it's just one of the things I've gotten used to ignoring over the years growing up. Oh, thanks. Then I tear open the package and start nibbling on the edge of the bar. Apart from an acknowledging look, Ash doesn't say anything after that small exchange. For that, I'm thankful. After getting an earful from both Becca and Rose, it's so nice to be able to just sit down with someone who is not going to nag at you. How'd the open house go? The usual. We got a bigger crowd than normal because of the property's fame, but really, no different from the typical open house. On second thought, it actually looks like a fancy party more than an open house. I've never felt so underdressed in my life. Weren't you there? I wasn't really listening. I should have asked someone to kick you out. <laughs> no, you won't. And what makes you so sure? One, ever since you got assigned to this property, you've been freaking out about it. Rebecca's words, not mine. She's been complaining to me about how you talked your ears off, by the way. Two, despite your initial qualms about the place, you still took the job. Which brings us to three. It's been months since you last settled a deal, and you're short on money right now since you're back to your instant noodle diet. How do you even know about the last one? Rebecca? Rebecca. That's why it's ugly, uh... Anyhow, you're hell-bent on selling the mansion. Even if someone you know personally is in the tour group, you aren't going to just kick them out. Every single person who went on your open house is still a prospective client to you. Even me. He's not entirely wrong. Oh man, I walked right into that one, didn't I? I hate you. I really hate you right now. <laughs> His answer is a small laugh. The kind that screams, I'm right, I told you so. I hate it when he does that. I'll have you know that there's already someone who's extremely interested in this property. So even if you express to any sort of interest in it, I don't think they'd be willing to let you have it. Too bad. Provided I didn't botch it with the rights. Why of all times did I have to screw up like that, in front of an, import an important customer, no less? I owe Rose a big apology. I hope she likes free donuts. You don't seem too happy about it. I am happy. Doesn't this look like a happy face to you? Nein, das sieht definitiv nicht wie ein glückliches Gesicht aus. Really? And here I was thinking you found another one stuffed in the sofa. Okay, scheinbar hat sie das wirklich mal. Or is it the wardrobe this time? He meant that as a joke, but how close it is to the truth made my blood run cold and my own heart beat in a heavy weight, a heavy weight in my chest. All at once the letter in my bag feels a whole lot heavier, burdened by my own guilt and apprehension. Warum schuld? Stand da in dem Brief, sie muss es an fünf Personen schicken oder sie muss es fünf Personen zeigen? Wenn es zeigen ist, dann hat es ja jetzt schon vier Leuten gezeigt, ne? Luke hat's gesehen, Hannah hat's gesehen, Marianne hat's gesehen. Und Rose, ich weiß nicht, ob Rose sich das angeguckt hat. Also drei bis vier Leuten hat sie schon gezeigt. Yeah, well, things happened. Stuff the right couple might not be pleased about. No need to make a fuss about it. It's normal in the business. You made them angry? Not angry. Just stuff happened. Stuff happened. Like? Things. <laughs> Did they do anything? Your clients. The rights, was it? I can't answer that. Hmm. <sighs> At least not without revealing everything that took place in the attic. Okay, also wir erzählen ihm auf keinen Fall die Wahrheit. Offensichtlich, das steht nichts. <lacht> Starbucks, süß. Ähm, also er scheint ja sehr aufmerksam zu sein. Das heißt, Lügen würde er wohl bemerken. 
Wir wechseln das Thema. You keep asking me about my work, yet you haven't said a single word about yours. Ein Moment. Das hier angefangen hat, ist es wohl ein bisschen besser geworden. Also von Relationship Status her war es die bessere Entscheidung. That's not fair. Both you and Zach have literally disappeared off the face of the earth. A no exaggeration, but changing the subject to something else is still better than outright lying to him. Besides, it never works with him. Das dachte ich mir nämlich auch. I'm not sure if it's because I'm just bad at it or because he's just really very good at his job. He doesn't answer immediately, only momentarily shifting a glance over me and returning it back to the road when he has to make a sharp turn. Outside, the sun has already started its descent, casting a vibrant orange glow on the tall buildings. I wonder how long before we reach the venue for Zack's film. Checking the street signs outside, it appears Ash has taken the longer route. Odd, but he's probably trying to avoid the rush hour traffic. Didn't we just talk a week ago over chat? That's different. Linking your awful memes in the group chat box every morning isn't exactly a conversation. Excuse me, I don't hear you calling them awful while you're laughing at all of them. Shut up! And you aren't answering my question. That earns him a soft punch to his arm. I did laugh at them, but I'm not going to give him the satisfaction of knowing that I find most of them funny. It'll only make his head bigger, stupid Ash. All right, all right, lay off on the abuse. Remember that case I mentioned before? We've been trying to pin the bastard down, but it required more work than we anticipated. The guy's slippery like that. We got some good lead months ago. He recounts what he's been doing in the time we haven't seen each other. His usual work, the occasional small investigation and the big case he's been stuck working on, stuff he couldn't mention in the brief time we catch each other online. Although most of it are the trimmed down versions, only things he can tell. He has always been careful about that. Even in the way he spins his answers to my questions, just enough to satisfy my curiosity, but not enough to paint the whole picture. At one point his voice takes on a strained tone when he mentions something about the big case, but I don't dwell on it much. That's normal, right? I mean, who wouldn't be frustrated if you couldn't bring someone to justice because they kept slipping out of your fingers? If I were in his shoes, I'd definitely lose my mind. His stories never ceases to be entertaining to me, regardless. If things weren't the way they were back home, maybe I would have considered taking on the same job as him. Well, nope, not really. Mama would never allow that. But the idea is still there, along with countless others I've had let go. Time passes quickly between us in this manner, and before I know it, we're already at the movie house. A small crowd has already formed in front of the theater when we arrive. The Lift Fest, short for Luxbourne Independent Film and Theater Festival, attracts a bigger crowd annually, and this year is no different. I've only been to a few indie film screenings with Zach, uh, with Zach, sorry, so I'm not an expert on the matter. But I know that for people hoping to make a break in the industry, getting your film recognized by a local event like this is already a big deal. Especially for a newcomer like that, Zach. He hasn't won an award, but just getting a confirmation letter that the festival committee wants to include his movie in this year's lineup already put a grin on his face for weeks. Speaking of the guy, he's impossible to miss. At six feet, he appears to loom over most of the moviegoers, and with his large build and heavy voice, there's no surprise when people give him a wide berth as they pass by. It's often easy to mistake him for someone intimidating at the first glance. I did back then when I didn't know any better. Ash did too, I heard, once early in their friendship. Oh, there's Zach! Okay, that's really cool. Hey, hey, you guys! Long time no see! Can you make him a bit more stereotyped? Zack's face light up with a smile on his own. He moves towards us with careful steps, taking a significant effort to make himself smaller so as not to bump or accidentally hit anyone. Typical Zack. Okay, das ist wirklich die längste Demo der Welt. Ich muss jetzt hier nochmal einen Schnitt machen. Ich werde alles am selben Tag veröffentlichen, ihr verpasst nichts. Aber ähm, ich brauche nochmal eine Pause, es tut mir leid. Also erstmal danke fürs Zusehen und hoffentlich bis zur nächsten Folge. Ciao!